Okay, good morning. Welcome to our bi-weekly live yoga class. My name is Joanna, if we've not met before. And today's class is a yin practice. It's 45 minutes. And I'll be guiding you through some cooling elements that we may find useful as on, in the Northern Hemisphere, we come into the warmer months. So we're going to start with a pranayama that is cooling on the body. Um, but you'll also need lots of props for this practice in order for us to truly ground and settle. So you'll see I have two bolsters on my mat. I also have two blocks that you can't see, they're over there, and um, an eye pillow. So if you have those items available, bring them to your mat. If you do not, you can make shift with the things you have at home pillows off the couch and the bed work really well as bolster alternatives and big thick books work well as block alternatives. So find the bits that you have. And I will meet you on your mat in a seated position of Sukhasana. You can choose your, your version of Sukhasana. So the first thing we're going to do is sitali, which is a cooling breath exercise. And for this breath, you'll want to curl your tongue. And I know not everybody can curl their tongue, so I will give you an alternative. The curling of the tongue will look like this, where the sides of your tongue curl up and you create a small hole in the tongue that you're going to suck the inhale breath into. If you can't create that shape with your tongue, then you can purse the lips together like you're sucking on a straw, like this. So you choose which one works for you. The inhale breath goes through this small hole you're creating, and then we take a little hold, a little breath retention at the top to hold that cool air in. On the exhale, we breathe out through the nose so that we maintain the cool air in the body and we breathe out the warm air from the nose. If this breath creates any discomfort in your body, please come back to a regular breath cycle. Don't feel like you have to continue. If this breath feels good in your body, we're going to do 10 rounds of this breath in order to start to feel the benefits of cooling. Feel free to pause, feel free to go longer if you have more time today, and just know that this will be a tool you can have with you uh, whenever you're feeling overheated. So let's begin, hands on the thighs or belly or ground, wherever's comfortable. Take your first inhale through the tongue or lips. Hold at the top. Exhale from the nose. Inhale through the tongue or lips. Hold at the top. Exhale from the nose. One more with me. Inhale through the tongue or lips. Hold at the top. Exhale from the nose. Continue at your own pace. Inhale.
Two more rounds. When you've finished your 10 rounds of breath, come back to a regular breath cycle and just notice where you may be experiencing cooling in your body. For me, it's around the throat space and into the chest cavity. Where is the coolness showing up for you? And imagine if you did 10 more rounds of that breath, how more impactful that cooling quality could be. Begin to just gently roll your shoulders now. And then let's take seated cat cow. So inhale, tilt your tail back as you bring your belly and chest and chin forwards. And as you exhale, start to round your back and look to your belly button. Again, like that, inhale, come forwards and up, heart shining. Exhale, round the spine, look to belly. Last cycle, inhale forwards and up. Exhale to round. Inhale back to a neutral spine. Float your right arm into the sky and lean to the left with your left hand or forearm to the mat. You might look down at your hand, you might look forwards, or you might choose to look up, depending what feels good for your head and neck. Keep hugging your lower ribs in as you do this. Take three more breaths. Use your inhale to come all the way back to center. Exhale, hands on your thighs. Inhale, lift your shoulders up. Exhale, roll your shoulders down your back. Inhale, left arm to the sky. Exhale, leaning over to the right, right hand or forearm on the earth. Continue to either look down, forwards or up. Take three breaths. You may note that this practice will be slow. We are cooling the system from the inside out. Use your inhale breath to come all the way back to center. Exhale, hands on your thighs. Inhale, lift your shoulders up to the ears. And exhale, roll your shoulders down your back. We're going to come onto our belly for our first asana or our first hold, our first yin hold. And for this shape, you might like to have a bolster at the front of your mat. The other bolster you can slide away. Come all the way down onto your front body, however is comfortable for you to get there. And begin to stack your hands on top of your bolster along with your forearms and then rest your chin to the bolster. What we're doing here is we're starting to create cooling into the front of your body. Relaxing your hips and legs, you might like to rock them side to side. Now, if you don't like having your head elevated like this, this is a, a gentle um, lift of the cervical spine. If that doesn't feel good, you can always slide this uh, proper way and lower your chin and hands to the mat. Further to this, we're coming into half happy baby or half frog 
um, as it's more commonly known, on our front body. So for this one, I will take the prop away for myself, but feel free to keep it if you prefer that. And then I'm going to turn my right ear to the hands or down onto the mat, if that's where you have them, and slide the left knee up the side of the mat. Your left knee is coming towards your left armpit, and you're trying your best to keep the front of your hips facing down, the front of your chest and belly facing down. Try not to lift that left side of your body at all. Here is where we stay for time. And I will give you a couple more options for those of you with your head and hands on the mat, not on the bolster. If that's you, you could place your hands and arms into cactus and play with turning your head in the other direction. So now you have your left ear resting on the mat. See how that feels for your head and neck, for your shoulders, for your back. And make sure you pick an option that works best for you. What we're doing here is placing as much of the front of our body in contact with the coolness of our mat, with the coolness of the floor as possible. So I want you to soak up that coolness coming from the floor into your body. And all the while you're here, you're relaxing your hips, you're relaxing your glutes. We are not clenching or holding in the legs. Do your best to breathe in and out of your lower belly, which will help with grounding your energy and cooling your system from the inside out. take five more breaths. You're done, you can start to slide your left leg to meet your right leg. You can bring your hands back underneath one another and chin to the hands. Exhale your breath, maybe rock your hips a little side to side. We'll take that straight to the other side. So your left ear starts on your hands or on your bolster. And it's your right knee that's sliding up the side of your mat towards your right armpit. Again, adjust your hips and legs so that you're in a comfortable position that you can stay in for time. Maybe you keep your hands where they are. Maybe you take your arms into cactus. And maybe you turn your ear so now your right ear is to the floor. See how that feels on this side, on this side of your head and neck. For me, this is very challenging on this side because I have some tightness in the left side of my neck and shoulder. So I know I won't be able to stay like this for very long. I can already feel it starting to resist. So I will be bringing my head back to center and resting my chin or maybe just the right ear, uh, sorry, the left ear and looking to the right.
Some of the other benefits of this pose is to create space in the inner legs around the adductor muscle of your inner right thigh. And like I said previously, it's a great way to practice releasing and holding in the back of your hips and around your glutes. It's very commonplace for us to clench in that area, but here you're being asked to soften, to yield, and to breathe into your lower belly, which hopefully will wrap some of that breath around your lower back. When it comes to cooling the body from the inside out, we need to move slowly. We will not achieve cooling if we are moving too fast, if we're trying to cram in too many poses. We need to give the body time, time to slow down, time to soften, Time to receive this coolness from the floor. Let's take five more breaths on this side. Once you're done, you can slide your right leg to meet the left one. You can return your chin to your hands or your forehead to your hands and rock your hips and legs side to side. One more time. From here, take a big breath in and a cleansing breath out. Place your hands on the mat, either side of your rib cage, and press your way up to tabletop position. From tabletop position, bring some of your props nearby, as you might like them for this restorative version of a child's pose. We're going to take two blocks onto the mat, one slightly in front of the other. And then we're going to take our bigger bolster on top of that. So now you have a little more of an, uh, a little more height to your bolster. And from here, you're going to lower your belly and your chest and one of your ears to that setup. Arms are bent. You can have the arms close to you. Sometimes it's nice to slide the arms into that gap between your two blocks. If you have a gap between your pelvis and your heels, then you can always fill that gap with another bolster or cushion. If you prefer your chin to the bolster looking in front of you, that's great too. If you want to change up the way you're looking, so maybe you spend a few breaths with your right ear to the bolster and then a few breaths with your left ear to the bolster. That's lovely too. Offering your neck a stretch. But again, just be mindful with the neck. For me, like I said, having my right ear to the bolster for too long just does not feel good, does not feel appropriate. So don't feel like you have to match everything exactly on both sides. Child's pose is one of our humble poses, grounding the energy of our body down to the floor, which is what we want when it comes to cooling. 
So here is another lovely opportunity to soften the front of your body into the support of the props beneath you while also breathing into your lower belly and wrapping that breath around your lower back. Do your best to deepen your inhale and expand the space around the back of your rib cage, sides of your waist and lower back. Now if you bring your chin to the bolster, what would it feel like to start walking your hands forwards? Maybe flat hands to the mat or up on your fingertips. I just want to see if that creates any space around your shoulder blades or under your arms that feels good. If it doesn't feel good, you can always come back to where you were. But if it feels nice, then spend the last five breaths here. And then soften the elbows, plant your hands on the mat either side of you and lift your chest away from your bolster. Turn the bolster the other way now and have it directly on the mat in front of you. Remove your two blocks to one side, remove any bolster that's under your hips and come around to a seat and place that other bolster under your seat. I want you to sit on it. I want you to grab the first bolster and put your legs over the top of it and bring the bolster under your knees. So you have this really nice softness through your legs. Your hips are elevated on your other bolster and you're sitting very close to the edge of that one, almost like your pelvis is going to fall off it. But what this is doing is tilting the pelvic bowl in a forwards direction which will help us as we come into our fold. So this is the setup. If any of this does not feel good, you can remove those props, no problem. Hands on the tops of the thighs or hands either side of your legs. Take an inhale breath, have your legs your hip distance apart, not too close together. And exhale, hinge forwards. Try your best to keep your feet, your toes pointing up to the sky so your feet are flexed. Pressing away with the heels of your feet so that you get more length up more of the backs of your legs. Let your hands settle wherever they land. It might be on the shins, it might be on the ankles. It might be around the outer edges of your feet or maybe over the tops of your feet. Or you might like your hands on the ground or your bolster. 
Only go as far as you feel enough of a stretch, meaning it's not too intense, it's not too deep, but it's also not passive. So where is that place for you of length and breath? Where is that place that you can stay in for time in the shape of Paschimottanasana, a seated forward fold? Remember, we are not trying to acquire more heat in the body. We are trying to acquire more cooling in the body. So often if we push ourselves too far into a pose, we're going to start to accumulate heat. The body will start to get a little flustered, a little irritable. So if you can avoid that, please do. So pay attention to the pose and keep asking yourself, is this enough or is this too much? Find that sweet spot of just enough, just the right amount of length. Now be very mindful of the position of your head and neck. If you're looking towards your toes, you're straining the back of your neck, which could also lead to an accumulation of heat. So try and look at the space between your two legs and think about the neck being equal on all sides, equal length on all sides of the neck. Now, if you do have your hands around the tops of your feet, something I've been playing with lately is to add a little more pressure to the balls of the feet. So you're actively bringing the toes closer towards you and actively pressing the heels further away from you. What I find this does is it targets a little further down the legs. So not just all up in the hamstrings, the upper backs of the legs, but maybe a little more into the calf muscles, the Achilles, the soles of the feet. So feel free to explore that too. We're going to take five more breaths in. And then guiding your hands up your legs, nice and slowly, rolling up through your back, taking a big breath in and a full breath out at the top. You can keep the bolster that's underneath your knees and shimmy off the bolster that's under your seat. Turn it the other way so it's a long way so that when we lie down on our back, it is along the length of our spine and maybe add an additional block to the back of your head so this bolster is on a gentle incline. It may not be for you, but it's there as an option. Also remember, you do not have to have all of these props underneath you if you don't want them all. You're lowering your spine and the back of your head, and then you might hug that second bolster a little close to the backs of your legs so that when you connect the soles of your feet together and let your knees move wide, your outer thighs and your outer knees are supported. This is Supta Baddha Konasana, reclined butterfly pose with a gentle supported back bend. 
Your hands can be on your inner thighs or your lower belly. Or you might choose to open your arms wide across the floor, palms facing up to give your chest and under your arms a little more space. Relax around your jaw and eyebrows once you get here. And this is a lovely opportunity to use your eye pillow. Now, another great tip for cooling is to have been a little bit more organized than me and have put this eye pillow in the fridge an hour or so before your practice. So that now when you come to use it, it is cooling on your forehead and around your eyes, which can really help with puffiness, migraines and headaches. If you're, ha if you're having a, a fever or just feeling overheated, cooling from the top of the head can really be very soothing. Now, of course, if we had longer together, I would love for us to have longer in all of these shapes that I'm offering today. But because I want to give you a well-rounded practice, I'm going to slowly move out of this pose and into the next, but know that you can stay here longer. So if you're coming with me, you'll remove your eye pillow, You'll bring your hands to the outsides of the legs and you'll bring your knees back together. You'll lift yourself up, pressing into your elbows or rolling onto one side. And you'll remove the prop under your back and under your head. The bolster under your legs, you'll bring to one side. You'll lie back down on the floor, enjoying the lovely space you've just created in the back of your body. Take a big breath in and a big breath out. The big bolster is now going in between your legs at its skinniest width. And we're going to shimmy our hips to the right and lower both knees to the left. I want you to stack your knees, shins and ankles between the bolster. I like to imagine you're making a sandwich. Your legs are the bread and your bolster is the jam. If this does not feel quite right or it might feel a bit too deep today, then locate a block, I'm having trouble finding mine, and slide it under your two legs so you have not come so deep into the twist. Or, if you're noticing your right shoulder is raised and that feels uncomfortable, your block could go under your right shoulder for a bit more support. You don't have to do those options, they're just there if you need them, as always. Hands can be on your belly or ribs. Hands can open wide across the floor in a T-shape or more of a cactus shape. You can be looking up directly at the sky or you could turn your head gently to the right in the opposite direction to your legs. Spinal twists are a great way to cool the body down and I highly recommend them, especially if the twist is a little more restorative. It's not going to feel cooling if you are taking your body into its maximum depth of twist, that will feel too intense. So please find a gentle twist, a twist on your back where you can receive the coolness from the back of your mat into your body and your body is in a twist that is easy to breathe in and your body can settle in. Let's take three more breaths here. And like I said before, if you would like longer, then you take longer. If I was teaching a 60 or 90 minute class, this shape would definitely be a lot longer. I'd probably keep students in this pose for about five minutes on each side.
engage your core and carefully bring yourself and your bolster back to center. Find the middle of your mat, take a big breath in and a full breath out. Give yourself time to reset, recalibrate in center. This is part of the cooling process. Second side, hip shifting to the left, both your knees and your bolster coming over to the right. Knees, shins and ankles stacked and the bolster is the cushion, the padding between those areas. Hands can rest on your body or open wide. You can look up or you could turn your head left in the opposite direction to your legs. Maybe your hands rest on your legs to ground the legs a bit more and aid in you not clenching or holding in the hips. Really visualize your cool breath spiraling down your back in this twist. Ringing out any stagnation, any stickiness, any blockages. Making space for more coolness, more lightness. Let's take another three breaths here. And then let us bring our body back to center nice and slowly. Bring the bolster back using your hands. And exhale your breath in center. Rearrange your body to that neutral position. And just enjoy that release, that quality of surrender, of yielding as your back finds the middle of your mat. The last pose I'll guide before we take Shavasana is Viparita Karani, also known as Legs Up. Now I'm going to show it you in the middle of your mat, but if you have a wall nearby, you could move to the wall, shimmy your hips close to the wall, and then bring the legs up the wall so your heels are resting. If you don't have access to a wall or you don't want to move from where you are, then you're going to slide your bolster underneath your pelvis. Now I am using the bolster because I like the amount of height it offers, but it's also soft, it's cushioned. But you might find this is too high, then please add a different height prop, like a block or a folded blanket or a smaller chip phone block if you have one as another alternative. Keep your hands on the floor to ground you. Bring your knees one at a time to the chest and watch the middle of your back Sink a bit close to the floor while the back of your pelvis tilts up to the sky a little more. Begin to float your legs into the sky, wiggling your toes, rolling your ankles, softening the knees. You're decompressing the joints here. You're sending deoxygenated blood from the extremities back to the heart space. So you might start to feel a cooling quality in the feet, in the ankles, in the lower regions of your legs. If you feel stable here, you could also play with floating the arms up too, wiggling the fingers, rolling the wrists, adding a little softness to your elbows and then letting the wrists go limp so the hands are hanging. And finding stillness here above you, your body may feel more weightless, like it's floating. Close your eyes, maybe once again, add the coolness of your eye pillow 
over your eyes. Take a big breath in and a cleansing breath out. If that felt good, do it again. Inhale through the nose. Exhale from the mouth. One more clearing breath. Inhale through the nose. Exhale from the mouth. And this shape is, again, one of those poses where the longer you're in it, the more you're going to benefit from it. So I'll often try and keep 10 minutes at the end of the yin practice for this pose before Shavasana. Of course, some students don't want to stay in this pose that long, and that's absolutely fine. They can make their way out whenever they're ready and know that Shavasana is the last place we're all going to, so they can have longer in their Shavasana today. If you have more time, again, this is a pose you could remain in. But for the benefits of this practice, this more contained practice, we'll just take three more breaths here. And then firstly, the hands will float down to the floor to anchor. The knees will soften. And then one foot at a time returns to the mat. Now give yourself permission to be still for a few breaths once you land back on the floor, feeling all the sensations through your arms and legs, maybe feeling that cooling quality. Maybe releasing another big exhale breath. Now our last pose together is Shavasana. Shuffle your feet into parallel, hip distance apart, lift your pelvis up, slide your prop, your bolster, down your legs. Now you can either have it behind your knees with the knees going wide, or for the purposes of more cooling, I'm going to rest the lower parts of the legs to the bolster. So around the Achilles and the calf muscles. And then the second bolster I'm going to use as a little cushion for the back of the head and neck. So feel free to use that as well. Return the eye pillow to being over the eyes and then resting the arms wide of the body, palms facing up. The absolute pose of surrender, of slowing down, recharging and receiving the coolness of ether, of air, space above you and the coolness of earth grounding the, below you. Please take as long as you need in your Shavasana today. There is no rush. I will leave you here to rest, recharge, and cool your systems from the inside out. I hope this practice has been of service to you, and I hope you take some of the tools learnt and apply them to areas of your day where you are feeling warm, or overheated, frustrated, or irritable. These poses and this breath work can all help to soothe and cool. Thank you so much for your time. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Namaste.